My name is Peter Graham. I'm uh, part of the fundraising team for the project known as On Freedom's Wings, which is a project to create a full-size representation of a Lancaster bomber on a hilltop in Lincolnshire near Norton Disney. And I represent today Bomber County Gateway Trust, who are uh, the charity behind the project. The project actually got underway because a local a group of people, like-minded, decided that it was time that something was done in Lincolnshire, on the Knott's Lincolnshire border, to represent the many air crew who lost their lives in World War II, flying for Bomber Command. And it just so happens that uh, the local landowner, uh, who's a farmer, Charlie White, at Norton Disney, happened to have a plot of land available right on top of the hill. It was a very convenient location to place the sculpture. I'm Aidy Longmate. I'm one of the trustees of the Bomber County Trust, Gateway Trust. I'm absolutely mad on the Lancaster Bombers, Bomber Command, anything associated with it. When I saw the project, I had to do it. It was just something I wanted to do and I knew I had to be part of it. Bomber County Gateway, it's the gateway from Nottinghamshire into Lincolnshire. It's on the main route in on the A46, so there's going to be over 30,000 people can see it, drivers can see it today. The uh, structure is going to be 93 tonnes. The tip of the highest wing is going to be just shy of 100 foot. It's going to be 93 foot. I challenge any man that can't see it from the road, because you will be able to. It's going to stand out, yeah. My name's Di Abelwhite. I've been a bomber command researcher for 24 years. So when I was asked if I would help out with On Freedom's Wings, uh, of course my main interest was the fact that the sculpture is a tribute to Lancaster VNN and she crashed nearby in Thirlby Woods, so there is obviously a connection with that. So one of the first things I thought I would do is try and research the crew that were on the aircraft that night. George William Marshall Harrison is buried at Thirlby Churchyard in the Commonwealth War Graves there, which is very close to where the aircraft came down. But the sad thing is he'd got married on the 19th of August 1942 and he lost his life on the 19th of September 1942 so he'd only spent four days with his new bride before he was killed. He is one of 55,573 air crew that were lost during World War II. I'm AD, the workshop manager here at Timmins Engineering. I've been given the privilege of fabricating and welding what you can see behind me, memorial of the Lancaster bomber. The, the section you can see behind me is the tail section. It's one of the most complicated sections of the build, in my opinion. It's certainly presented its challenges, but we're quite proud of the outcome. Everything fits together, everything looks as, as it should. This is the second phase of the build for us. The first phase was done last year which is the main fuselage, which has uh, gone away to storage at the moment. After this, we're going to do the two wing sections. And the wing sections are going to be the longest sections by far. Once this is all constructed and built, have an open day here at Timmins Engineering, and we're going to set it out in the yard for everybody to see and everybody to enjoy. Obviously, this is a project delivered by, so far, the generous donations of a lot of people. That's monetary donations. There's an awful lot of goods and services have been donated by people too. There'll be a long list of those, which you'll probably see at the end of this film. It'll give you a clear indication of just how much has been given to date. In terms of uh, achievements so far, as the fundraising goes for this project, you have to say that with the work that's been done, and that includes the money that's been donated and the goods and services that have been generously donated by a lot of people to date, we've probably got something in the order of five to six hundred thousand pounds worth of work done in six years which is phenomenal really to get it over the line we've got to raise the money for the court end steel cladding which will resemble the angel of the north for those of you who have passed that way on the a1 uh, it's an expensive commodity it requires a lot of labor and that is our ambition for next year so that if we can get the skeletal uh, plane up onto the stanchions this september we hope that by September 2025, we can have it clad. One of my main reasons for wanting to see this project finished is I look back to the turf lifting event, which was a fantastic event, but we had a whole row of World War II Bomber Command veterans sat there listening to our plans 
and looking forward to seeing it completed. Sadly, due to circumstances beyond our control, we haven't got it done in time for most of them to see it. But I would love to get it finished so that their families can know that they are not forgotten and that we have completed our promises. Well, that's what the project's brought out people. They've all wanted to help us. Uh, they've done it for free and uh, done it with a smile on their face. I've been asked a number of times why I've become involved in this project, but I've become attached to the idea that something local needed to be put up to give us a memory of what the men of Bomber Command did in World War II and in the location that they flew from. And having something that's recognisable, like a Lancaster bomber, on a skyline in Lincolnshire, on the border with Nottinghamshire, you can imagine that, can't you? Warm summer evening, driving up the A46, you will see a Lancaster in flight. What could be better?